Third day in the remote desert started off a little bit windy. With barely enough fuel to make it out of the desert and into civilization, we can't afford to play around any longer in the sand and decide to push straight to the nearest city of Zagora. For many centuries a procession of camels was the means of transport from Marrakesh through the Sahara Desert and on until they reached Timbuktu in Mali, 52 days from Zagora. This was a popular stop along this desert route known as the Salt Trail. Many believe a Moroccan Sultan made his wealth from these caravans, which transported everything from dates, silver, gold, slaves, handcrafted works and of course salt. Zagora is also home to one of the vastest palm groves in the southeast of Morocco. Family-owned gardens filled with date palms stretch out for miles between the city and the river. Over 30 varieties of dates grow in the region, harvested from September to November, and they're renowned for being the best dates in the country. Their deliciousness is attributed to the hot, dry climate, where temperatures can soar up to 50 degrees in the summer, and it is in this palm groove that we decide to gift ourselves to some comfort. Okay guys, good morning. Um, yesterday we didn't record a lot because it was a long day and we took this chance that we're staying at a really nice rehab here in the middle of the palm trees in Zagora. Uh, so we took the chance to get a little bit of rest. Today we're gonna keep on going towards the west. Uh, our next stop is Wazarzat. And right now I'm just taking this moment to, you know, doing some daily chores, emptying the memory cards and organizing the footage that we have already um, so yeah we're gonna go for one or two more dips in the pool and then we're gonna get going Right as we leave the Riyadh and stop at the gas station for fuel, we notice that one of the front transmission boots on the duster is torn and leaking some grease. Had we found out about this problem earlier, we might have been in for a bit of a worry. Here in Zagora, however, mechanics spread through the countless off-road repair shops and work day and night to fix problems just like ours from groups of adventurous guys coming in and out of the harsh desert. Finding one willing to help us was no big deal.
10 months ago we were disinfecting everything with alcohol before we ate in Lisbon at reputable restaurants and here we are April 2023 we're cutting salami on top of a plastic bag with a pocket knife on the floor in Morocco and eating it right here times change With the transmission problem solved and a nice inside out wash on both vehicles, we leave Zagora behind towards our next stop. Okay, we just arrived at the camp in Warzarzat. Uh, we decided to stay at a campsite where we have some amenities to wash our clothes and get a shower and everything. We already went shopping and finally after 10 days of eating tagine we decided to cook some burgers for dinner. Um, yeah, right now we're just walking out of the campsite to try to find a place where we can get some herbs for tea and later we're gonna return to the campsite make ourselves the burgers and then maybe go for a walk or not we're not sure yet but those are the plans for right now Okay, so we got our herbs for the tea, but apparently we need some other dry herbs, not only the mint and the ervas dulces, they call it. And the guy next to the place where we got the herbs was kind enough to offer us uh, some, just a bit of the, of the tea leaf and also a bit of sugar that he said was mandatory. Um, we offered to pay him uh, something, but he said it was a gift. So we're now we're heading back to the camp um, to prepare ourselves a nice cup of tea and then the burgers. Há algum prédio aqui que não esteja em construção? Caralho, até estou com o dedo do E olha aquele gato. Aquele...
observar si te quieres para salir. Perfecto. What's good about this place is the sky. We have this blue sky, which they can use like a blue screen. They can add explosion, helicopter, whatever they want to add. And we don't have noise, no airplane, no cars. It's good for the action. The action, they can perform very good. And good for production, the movie will be too short because they will not do a lot of takes. So if they came here, they will save money and time just by being here. Okay. All right, so this is Rome, that's Greek, that's Egypt. Arriving in Marrakesh, one cannot avoid noticing the city's main square, the Jamalfna. Here, inhabitants and tourists gather both during the day and during the night to have something to eat, shop, or observe the various shows taking place. What makes Jamalfna the city's top attraction is how it transforms from dawn to dusk. During the day, the square is full of surprising sights, from monkey trainers to snake charmers, as well as numerous stands selling orange juice, spices and herbs. At dusk, Marrakesh's main square transforms and the morning stalls disappear to give room to food stands where visitors can have dinner surrounded by Moroccan musicians playing traditional music and various other shows. After a little walk around, into the souks we go. Only 20 minutes of walking from the main square towards the south, right at peak praying time where everyone shuts their businesses and heads to the mosque for the midday prayer, we find a small restaurant where we are about to try something we never really thought we would. Are the camel burgers 100% camel or it's mixed? Yeah. 100%? Good. So, four? Four? Yes. Uh, do they come with uh, chips? Yeah. Fries? Yeah, okay. Come here.
Okay guys, so this video pretty much marks the end of the Morocco Overland Expedition series. We had a lot of fun in this trip. We drove around a lot of cool places, uh, very different from each other. The vibe that you get in the mountains is completely different from the one you get in the desert and the one up north completely different from the one in the south. So, we really enjoyed getting to know the different subcultures that there are inside of the country. And of course, we were really amazed uh, once again to see the duster performing this kind of terrains. I know this series is ending a little bit sooner than you guys probably were hoping for. After Marrakesh, we still spent some days in Morocco uh, at the coast going all the way north until the border, until we took the ferry again to Portugal. But, you know, it was a very intense first 12 days and we figured that we also deserved a little bit of rest and off time when it comes to the cameras and the filming and everything. You know, filming one of these trips takes a lot of work. Uh, you must be always concerned about the camera and am I recording this? Am I capturing this moment so that we can, you know, maintain some kind of a storyline in the videos? So it's something that it's always in the back of your mind and that does take a little bit away from the whole experience and from, you know, after all, enjoying the trip as some sort of vacation. So we apologize already if you guys were hoping for a little bit more of the coast. Let me tell you guys right off the bat that we were not very amazed about the coastline, uh, at least not like we were with the rest of the country. We really enjoyed Morocco, we will be back sometime in the future and for right now we have some plans until the end of the year, uh, some small stuff, mostly the walk around the vehicle that we should have done beforehand. Definitely expect that in the future. If you guys have any questions that you'd like to see us answer, please leave a comment below. We are also planning a video about some sort of a Q&A so that we can answer all you guys' questions either about the trip or the vehicle or anything else and we are already planning our next year's adventure which is also going to be epic stay tuned to that so that you guys don't miss any news and once again thank you very much for watching the series hope you guys liked it and until next time bye bye